bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing on his word tonight. Lord, we come to your word. And Lord, your word is truth and life to those of us who find it. Anoint your word to each and every ear and each and every heart in this room that your word might come alive to us tonight and that we might learn to use it when we need it the most. And we need it the most today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your life. We ask this in your name. Amen. Tonight, we're going to bring you to one place that was in the reading of the Passion tonight. And if you want, if you have your Bibles with you, you can look it up. It's going to be from John chapter 19, verses 32 through 36. That's the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 32 through 36. And I'm going to read it for you. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead, already dead, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came out blood and water. And he that saw it bear a record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he has that what he saith is true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. You know, it's kind of strange when you hear this scripture because you see that John is describing what's going on at the crucifixion. And in a very rare moment, he stops the narrative. And he points out this event that took place for you to have the ability to believe. What was this? What was this event that was so special? What was happening at this moment that was so profound that he would literally stop the narrative and say, look at this. Take a look. Take notice. Because I'm a witness of it, and my testimony is true. And he says, it's so powerful that it fulfills the scripture. Not a bone will be broken. And the other scripture that gets fulfilled is they will look on him whom they have pierced. The reason why it's special is because John realizes, I believe, that Jesus is the Messiah. He realizes that he is the son of the living God, that he is the new Adam. Listen to the scriptures now in Genesis chapter 2, 21 through 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, and made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his mother his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Some of you might know this, and some of you might not, but the reason why Christ went to the cross is because God, who he is, had signed a writ of divorce with you. Because you had abandoned him. You decided that you wanted to be in the world. That you wanted to be of the world. You and I, as a species, as mankind, decided that we wanted nothing to do with God. And what he did was, is he scattered us to the wind. But he said, I know where you are, and I know who you are. 
Even in our divorce, his love for us was so great that he couldn't leave us alone. Even in our sin, while we're yet in our sin, the word of God says he died for us. And in order for someone who gets divorced to be remarried, there has to be a death. And so Christ goes and he dies so that you and I could have life. And what happens? He gives birth to his bride out of his side. That's the mystery of the gospel. From his side, you are born. His blood flows. Just like when a woman gives birth and blood and water flow from the womb, it's the side of Christ because if you look up the word for a rib, you'll see that it's the same word for a side. So Adam, who is a living soul, now, and he's asleep, and if you've ever hung around me and I'm thinking about scripture, I'll always ask you the question, when did they wake Adam up? Because it doesn't say he woke up. So you always wonder, did he forget to wake him up, or is this all a dream? Well, tonight I want to tell you that Christ is the new Adam. He is the eighth-day man. He is the one who gives birth to his bride. And he draws you so close to him, it is like glue. That you and him become one, and that's the gospel. That's what he wants to do, is that he, as we heard Father Paul preach about someday this week. I forgot which one it was. He said that it was God's desire that he, we would become one with him as he is one with the Father. And so when the disciple sees the blood and water flowing from the side, not only is it a fulfillment of those two scriptures, but it's a fulfillment of what God has done for you and I since the councils of eternity. The love that he has for you, he allowed you to be born from his side. You are not just some separate creature that was born into the world and got saved. You, since the councils of eternity, have been the bride of Christ, the priests of God, which are the same since the foundation of the world. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. And he's bringing you back unto himself to be born from his side. That's a miracle. The only reason we feel separate from God in any way in our lives is because we have departed from him, but he has never left you. We have grieved him. We have made him wrestle. His heart has ached because he loves you so much. And that's what this night is all about. And not only did he die for you, not only did he give birth to you from his side, he is the creator, as the word of God says. He is your creator and your bridegroom, as it says in Isaiah 54. That's his presence in your life. He no longer calls you slaves, but he calls you his friends, and he pulls them clo yourself close to you. And then after we put him in the tomb, and guess where that tomb is? You are that tomb. And what does he do? He dwells in you, and Christ becomes a living soul, a living soul, not only a living soul, but a life-giving spirit within you that gives birth to life. That's why the Apostle Paul so emphatically said, not only do I die with him, but I rise with him. And he says that not only do I do it once a year or every couple of months, I do it daily, Rise with him. And so we are putting him in the tomb. We are bringing him down from the cross. You who have been born from the side of Christ are 
are going to meet him on Sunday morning, your bridegroom. You don't have to doubt anymore. You don't have to be afraid. Go ahead and touch my side. Put it in my side and see that I am flesh and blood. See that I am alive. Touch me. And you will experience the power of the resurrection like you've never experienced it before. It only can take place at the foot of the cross. That's where your sins have been washed away. That's where your character is changed. That's where your life comes from. You don't receive life in this world because you live in this world. This world is death. But in Christ, you have life because he is your bridegroom, because he is your maker, and you were born from his side. Let God's word be fulfilled in your life. Allow him to move in you that you might die to yourself, to your old nature, to your old man, and that you might rise to new life in him. It's not something that happens because you go to church on Sunday. It's not something that happens because you went to Bible study on one night of the week. It's not because you did all those things. It's because what God did for you and your life is changed. And now you want to be in his presence. You want to know what his promises are in your life. You want to be able to stand on them. Even though your flesh might be weak within you, the spirit is willing to continue to move forward because you are a life-giving spirit with Christ. He is born in you. So tonight, as we go to the cross, even from your homes, we're going to be venerating the cross. Remember what happened at the side of Christ, that you were born. That's your entrance into the world. That's a miracle, a miracle of Almighty God. And you were washed in his blood and the water of his word has cleansed you because you come from the very womb of God. So bless him tonight and praise him. And may the Lord add a blessing to his word. Lord, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for the life that you've given us. Tonight, O oh Lord God, as we come before you, we ask, Lord, that you would allow our eyes, the inner eyes of our experience to be opened to the truth of the gospel, that we might know who you really are and what you mean to us and that who we really are. You have called us not only as priests and brides, you have called us as kings Oh, my God, we bless you tonight. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in your name. Amen.